Joined now by John Shannon, the former executive producer of Hockey Night in Canada, the co-host of the Bob McCowan podcast. Good morning, John. How are we doing? I am great, boys. Happy mm-hmm. Tuesday. Yes, and to you too. Uh, we'll start with our poll question. The Oilers, are they going to catch the Canucks? How worried would you be if you were in Vancouver? Uh, I, I, if you had asked me yesterday morning, I might have said yes. <laughs> uh, that's how tight it is. Isn't it, isn't it beautiful? We were just talking about this, John. I'm no, sorry exactly. to interrupt you. It's just that every game means so much right now. It, it, the math is spectacular, but continue, sir. Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna follow up with your follow-up. Yeah. Mm. And that's why we don't need more than 16 teams in the in the postseason because mm. we're in the playoffs now. Right. That's what that's what March has been great for and, and April is great for. It, it's fantastic. Um, but, you know, I, I think you know, the Oilers need every point. I know they still have a game in hand, but they needed every point. And to lose a point in St. Louis last night will affect things. They play Dallas tomorrow night. The Oilers have the most difficult schedule down the stretch in the NHL. Uh, starting last night, it was 10 games in 18 days. Uh, and that's going to be hard. That's going to be hard for the Oilers as they approach the playoffs as well. They're going to be a tired bunch by the time the postseason starts. Well, especially since they're not too far removed from an Eastern trip. They had a late Eastern trip this year, John. Really uh, strange. As well. Really mm-hmm. strange that, uh, that that there have been some trips at this time of year. Yeah, uh, the, the schedule is always one that is a tremendous debate. And I, I can assure you, I think managers are going to talk about would there be a possibility of increasing regional rivalries? We've talked about that before. And then also making sure that the last month of the season is within your own conference, at least. You know, some teams are fortunate. Los Angeles has a a, a great down the stretch. I think they have eight games left. Six of them are against teams in the Pacific time zone, and the other two are in mountain time. So it's not really an issue. Uh, But that wasn't the case for Winnipeg was the same way. They had a wet eastern trip late. Uh, some of the some of the teams uh, have had really difficult schedules, and I think the Oilers are at the top of that list. What's your theory on on team form before the end of the regular season, um, and and what that means for for playoff success? Have the Oilers been too good for too long that you'd be worried if you're the Edmonton? You know, we're we're due for a scuffle here versus you know Vegas and Dallas, who have just been red hot for the last two weeks, sort of thing. Is that is, is that better? Or is it the Canucks who are due for another hot streak? It's been months since they were red hot. Uh, I don't think there's a simple answer to that one, Blake. Um, mm-hmm. I just want my team healthy uh, by the 20th of April. Uh, you, you know, the, the the philosophy, the mental toughness changes so quickly for it comes to, when it comes to the postseason. Would I like the team to win a couple of games near the end of the season? Sure. Um you know, I, you, you look at Nashville. I think Nashville is probably the best example. They go 16-0-2. Um, they've won a couple and lost a couple since the streak. You wonder, have they spent too much energy with that long stretch Yeah. as we get down to the crunch time before the postseason starts, and will they have enough? I think that's one of the concerns. I, I don't mind scuffling at this time of year as long as you feel confident that your guys can get back on the straight and narrow, which I think the Canucks can. I mean, I think we saw that. Uh, if they, if they win three well, of their final four, I'm 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 not worried about them at all. But I do you know, want that. And I'm I'm probably I'm just from from their perspective. I just want to make sure uh, that uh, they, you know their top six defensemen uh, are on the ice for the postseason and Thatcher Demko's in goal. And mm-hmm. and if you can give me a couple of games for Demko before the end of the season, then life's pretty good. I, I, I would agree with you, fellas, except that this is a team that's never done it before in the Stanley Cup playoffs. It, it almost has a feel to me like, you know, they've spent their efforts, energies, what have you, and getting to where they're at. They're running on fumes a little bit. They haven't beaten a playoff team since March 9th. They're picking off wins against bad teams right now and losing – to the better teams. And then of course you have, you know, Demko, that's sort of leaves the practice ice. So I don't know. Uh, I'm starting to get a little concerned, a little worried about this Canucks team down the stretch. This is a, so let's, let's, let's go, let's do go into the uh, S and P time machine here. Okay. And, uh, go back to labor day last year 
And I would tell you, that's very good, Blake. Excellent. <laughs> um, I would, I would ask you, you two, the question. Mm. Here we are on the 2nd of April and the Vancouver Canucks are first in the Pacific and they're mm -hmm. kind of scuffling. Would you take it? Yes, and of you course. You guys would have jumped off the Lionsgate Bridge to say yes. So, I mean, I, so I, I know it's all relative, but I'm just saying this has been an unbelievable season for the Vancouver Canucks. Let's enjoy the ride a little bit, please. It sure has. And, <laughs> and John, another thing that we would not have said on Labor Day weekend, where would they be without Dakota Joshua? Well... You know Oof. what? I I can't believe that they haven't put the, the big line back together yet. But uh, you know, when you when you look at the, a couple of those stories, the Joshua story is one. Connor Garland's another great story. Connor Garland, um, you, you know, depending on you who you talk to, it, it was very frustrated. Thought about wanting to leave the the club. Um, changed his agent. Uh, the discussions improved and Connor Garland has become the Connor Garland that Jim Benning traded for. And he's become a valuable part of this team. If they can put Bluger, Joshua and Garland and, 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 and Garland back together for the playoffs, that's a formidable third line that's going to challenge a lot of teams and be a difference maker for this hockey club. That's if they don't need Joshua beside Miller and Besser. John, wow. with the way things are going on that line and that revolving door. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys. I, I like lines and I stick with them. I'd like to stick with them. And I think that coaches every once in a while get the, the itchy trigger finger to change things. Uh, Bluger, Garland and Joshua was too good a thing to change up in my mind. And it allows you to, to me, uh, stack the top six as sure. much as it can be stacked on this team. So I agree. You get the best out of Teddy Bluger down there. And for as much as you use a fourth line in the playoffs, I, you know, I, do I see Nils Amon as a fourth line center in the playoffs? Not really. But if you're asking him to go chew up five and a half minutes, I think he can probably do that. Yeah, I think you're probably right. And I mean, a lot of this is predicated on Elias Lindholm coming back and being healthy, right? Right, sure. Let's face it. I mean, so but I, I can only assume that they are being cautious and uh, they're, you know, taking their time to make sure that he's ready for the postseason. Um, voting is open for the Canucks team awards. Oh. Now, um, we're not going to ask you for your choices, but... Team MVP, not yet, at least. You have some time, Shannon. We'll give do your you, homework. We'll give you but Team MVP, most exciting player, unsung hero. Boy, could we, all be we, the same guy. We and could could we've got some derbies in there. Like you know, there are some tough choices in there, as opposed to other years where it was sort of filling out a ballot. MVP and most exciting player. Don't you think it's the same guy? Could very well be. I you're, talk, you're talking Miller, right? I think that's Quinn Hughes. Really? Yeah, Quinn oh, Hughes. okay. Yeah, yeah. See, I thought you were going Miller. I thought you meant Quinn, Quinn Hughes too, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, you know, when Quinn and, – and there are times when I watch Quinn Hughes and I'm saying, well, he's not going to get there. He's not going to get there. And all of a sudden he gets there. You know, I, I, I he always amazes me at times when he controls the puck. He's just – he's so smooth at times. And he's – he's he's he, it's not a question of overachieving, but – Boy, oh boy, is he good. It's it, it really, you know, when you look at the Norris race, I mean, he's definitely in the Norris race for, for the league award as the best defenseman. But, you know, the list of defensemen is so deep. When you look at Adam Fox and, and Hughes and Roman Yossi, who's had a great second half of the season, and then Kale McCarr and then Josh Morrissey. I mean, there are lots of great defensemen in this league right now, and Hughes is right in that batch. Does the second half for Hughes? Incidentally, McCarr one point back of Hughes yeah. uh, for the scoring lead in de amongst defensemen. Vancouver has a game in hand, which they'll play on Tuesday. Does uh, does the second half of Hughes hurt him for both the team and the, the league awards? Just the fact that he was just – he raised the bar so ridiculous in the first 50 games of the season that it almost seems disappointing in the second half, even though it's still a very good pace. I don't think so. Mm. Every, you know, all of the guys have had their ebbs and flows. Yossi did not have a really good first half of the season when Andrew Renette was changing the style of offense they had. Um, you, you know, who's been the most consistent? You know, Josh Morrissey might have been the most consistent defenseman that I listed. 
of, of all those guys through the, the first 72 or 73 games of the season. Um, but I don't, I, I, I don't think so because for the same reason that we bitch and complain that people on the West or players on the West coast don't get recognition in the East with their good play, There'll be lots of voters who heard great things about Quinn Hughes and will put them on their ballot and did not realize last Tuesday night he did not play very well. So yeah, there's a there's a there's a, 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 a good and a bad of being in Vancouver or at least in the Pacific time zone. Also, you have to commend the guy for even, even if he gave up this points lead on the second last day of the season or something oh. like that, leading for 98 percent of the season in that category. I mean, uh, that says something that's like going wire to wire in a PGA tour, uh, you know, tournament back to back weeks, you know, like it's uh, that's tough to pull off. So even if he doesn't ultimately win it just to be on top and to be chased for 98% of the season, I mean, that, that's gotta say something. Being in the discussion, he's in the discussion every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and you do wonder at times, but he he's, he's so controlling at times on the ice that, do you do people take for granted sometimes exactly what he does out there as well? Because he's he's just he's an he's amazing to watch. He's so much fun to watch. Uh, playoff scheduling. How much uh, how much wiggle room do you think the Canucks have there with the league? The league has its own agendas, but of course, building availability plays into it as well. How much uh, how much do you think the Canucks are 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 able to mold that to their own uh, wishes? Not as much as you think. Um, you know, uh, starting at home helps, but start times will be dictated by television. Uh, this is the time of year where our friends at Rogers will say that we need the Canucks on certain nights. Uh, we need the uh, Maple Leafs on certain nights. You know, it's going to be, uh, this is a, a really, really exciting time for national television in our country. When you consider that the, with the four teams that are going to make the playoffs, uh, they're in four different time zones. Mm. And so there's a bit of a challenge that way. But at the same time, if you could put, you know, two of those teams on one night and the other two teams on the other night, it is, it is big drama, big money, uh, and lots of eyeballs for, uh, for the people at Hockey Night in Canada. Did we ask you about Saturday, April 20th last week, John, and maybe just yeah. going with the Eastern teams because the Eastern teams finished Wednesday as opposed to the Thursday? I, I would, I mean, that that was my assumption when that all came about. Right. I can't see, I mean, Edmonton and Colorado play the Thursday night, which, by the way, could be the Art Ross trophy race finish too for the scoring league. So do the Canucks. Good show. Canucks, yeah. are, Canucks so, are on the road to Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so I I can't imagine that any of those teams, Colorado, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Vancouver, starting even before Monday. To be honest, I can't. I just can't envision it. Well, that'd be great. Um, talk it. Are you going to win the Jack Adams? <sighs> well, again, I I think like. Like Quinn Hughes, he's going to be on the ballot. I think he's going to be in the top three. Uh, he has done so many things positively that when you look around the league uh, and, and the other coaches that have, have made a difference, I think Rick Bonus should be on the ballot. This might be one where there's all three Canadian. Chris mm. Knobloch should be on the ballot too when you think about Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Vancouver. It's not going to be that way. We know that. Mm. Um, but you know, Paul Maurice has had a magnificent year. John Cooper probably has had done his best coaching job all in his career with what Tampa has done. But Rick Tockett should win the, in my opinion, should win the Jack Adams trophy as the best coach in the NHL this year. Yes. No, I, I don't think it's close in terms of teams that have exceeded expectations. No. Uh, you know, uh, there's been some other good coaching jobs here, yeah. but but with teams that were coming from a better base. I to think. jump 20 spots in the, the standings. Vancouver. Yeah, yeah come in on. the Vancouver. Although Cup. when you look at the numbers that he put together after he took over, you can see that, the, you know, this was a this was a team on the rise. <laughs> when when he uh, when he took over the coaching and and saw something and it also speaks to the the smarts of putting talk it in place when they did you know and you have to give Patrick and Jimmy some credit for saying okay we're 
you know, we're in a transition year, but we need Rick Tockett to weigh in on what kind of players we have and what we need to do and what changes we need, need to make. And that's really, I think that's really helped Rick this year. Uh, lastly, our friend Jonas Siegel of the Toronto Sports Media blog has reported. By the way, the that, Toronto Sports Media blog guy lives in Seattle. He lives in now Seattle. He does, yes. Yeah, he lives yeah. in Seattle now. Yeah. 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 I read that too yesterday about uh, Rogers and Amazon. Yeah, yeah, that Amazon would take over uh, the Monday night hockey slate, and that we'd have a new world where if you want to watch your games on Monday night, you're uh, you're streaming and you're streaming Amazon. Yep. Well, uh, I, I, all I can say is that when the NFL did it and did it so successfully, not with one group of people, but with two, because Amazon did the regular season and Peacock did a playoff, that legitimized it quickly. Um, there are there have been plenty of discussions, not just in in, uh, in in football, but now in hockey and in basketball for Amazon, who's going to play a role in streaming. Amazon's going to be part of the NBA. I guarantee you that as well. Um, this would not surprise me. I, I, I do know in past years there has been senior management at Rogers Corporation that have tried to suggest this, that they should sell off some yeah. of their games. Um I, I, I don't know where the league would feels about this. Um, you know, just as an aside, when, when Gary became commissioner, the number one rights holder in Canada was not a television network. It was a brewery. Um, and he was not very particularly pleased about not having a direct relationship with the television network. He had to deal through Molson's and that changed. So having the third party um, broadcaster, third party relationship, is one I wonder if Gary's opinion has changed very much of that. Now, well, do I think that Gary wants Amazon part of the future? He certainly wants a streaming partner, and Amazon makes as much sense as anybody because they get more money than God. Mm. Um, so, is this a good two year experiment with Amazon? Perhaps. Might be a little risky, uh, but it's just for Canada. It's not in the United States yet, it's just for Canada. Uh, and I would I would suspect then that they would also have to improve their quality of, of games because the Monday night package really, um, there was a lot of dogs on that schedule, particularly early on in the schedule. Last would, night yeah. they had Toronto, Florida. Yeah, last night they had Toronto, Florida, which was a great game to have, but you have to make sure that if you go to that third party, go to Amazon, you give them a good slate of games. I would agree. I, 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 would, I would bet Gary doesn't like the optics of rogers needing to uh, looking to offload you know he would rather be the broker of this deal rather than rogers well, I think, yeah right? well, i mean therein well, lies the problem when you sign 12-year deals for right. that sort of freight right. it's really hard to project the forecast that far in advance and we know rogers has taken a beating on this package and and in part because they just haven't had canadian teams in the playoffs making runs yeah well hey and and so here we are as we talked about 10 minutes ago i mean to have four teams uh, in the playoffs is a is a bonus. And the other thing I would suspect, and this is just me because I'm I'm trying to put two and two together with with the story that Jonah broke and get five. Uh, you would have to think that there'd be some level of playoff package in it for Amazon. I'm not sure if I'm Amazon that I would go and buy this package without a playoff. <laughs> round or a series a game from every yeah. series or something well, like that yeah or, or listen rogers in our country rogers control all controls all eight series right yeah so you know give them a series give the just give them a series doesn't it and and if i was again if i was amazon i'm not negotiating for them but if i'm amazon i'd say well give me the give me uh you know a canadian team but if push comes to shove, give me a U.S. U.S. series, and I control the whole series. And hey, this is minutia. Maybe the, the listener doesn't care about this, uh, but it's a fascination for me. Is is how is it branded? Like Rogers is on when Rogers is on CBC, it's still Rogers. Um, is it going to be Rogers on Amazon, or is it going to be Amazon on Amazon? Uh, you know, I, 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 if you're Amazon, you want to be creative and do things your way. Yeah, you think. Um. And I don't, and so that becomes, again, I, is that part of the negotiation? Who knows whether it's part of the negotiation. The simplest thing would be to take a Rogers product and stick it on Amazon. That's, that would that's be the simplest. Yeah. But 
it's also cheap and tacky, I think. You know, like and, and it's Amazon. It's freaking Amazon. Well, Amazon like, would then have to, you know, buck up and, and find a right. way to deliver to and produce a high and, yep. and broadcast hockey. It's well, hockey. and uh, you know, they they've done that with the National Football League. Mm-hmm. They spent a lot of money. Um uh, but that's a different market too. That's the United States. Right. That's 260 million people versus 40. That's right. That's like, I mean, so that's, that's, a, that's the real challenge. That's a game, you know, is going to tens of millions of people, mm-hmm. whereas you may not get a few million people right. on a hockey game. Right. I just, I just hope Bezos and the deputies are listening in here, Shannon, because the consulting fees that you just left on no the kidding. table yeah. that you could have otherwise collected had you not been fully honest with our audience. That's something I would trade it for a, a spot on the spaceship and go for a ride with Jeff. That's what I would do. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Jeffrey, yeah. Jeffrey, <laughs> can I call I you Jeff? I won't, I won't, I won't Mr. B. Just yeah, call Mr. B. yeah, something okay. tells me. Yeah, marvelous stuff, John. We'll catch up next week. Cheers, boys. Hey, everybody, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Secure Some Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.